Thank you all for being here. Sure. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Tuesdays is always my running day, because that's our formal session. But uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you to the panel and everyone that's here for being here. This is um, the Skill Trace Task Force, and today is Tuesday. What's the day? April 24th. April 24. So you all know the day. They all run in together to me. They all feel like the same day to me. So, but thank you all for being here. Um, let me just talk about why the Skill Trace Task Force was began. About 10 years ago, I recognized the fact that we had men and women that were coming into the city of Detroit from everywhere, um, Florida, Texas, California, every place getting jobs in the city of Detroit, and the people that were in the city of Detroit were underemployed and unemployed. And so I picked it back up, the Skill Trace Task Force, recognizing the fact that this city was built by the men and women of this city. And we needed to do what we needed to do to try to help the men and the women of this city be employed. And as you know, Skill Trace is not a job. Skill trades is a career. And it's a career that you can get, and you can be just like everybody else was. You can take that career, and you can move to Florida, to Texas, to California, but we want you to stay right here in the state of Michigan. And so that's why the Skill Trades Task Force began again. And since then, we've had the different trades that have come this young man right here from IBEW, he's here even if I'm not here. He is here helping people. The carpenters are here. The laborers are here. We always see the trades here and many developers that are here to try to assist our people in getting um, into the trade. I'm looking at a young man that's not sitting up here, but since I told him about the Skilled Trades Task Force, he has been here, got involved with the Randolph School, and has been there helping them in the Randolph School since we first talked about it. I think you got involved the next week, and that has been a few years ago. So I thank you all for being here, um, and again, I thank everyone that's sitting up here. I'm not, this is not my meeting, this is your meeting. So I'm not gonna talk. I'm gonna give them an opportunity to talk, them an opportunity to tell you who they are, what they do, and how you can become a part of what they do. If they have apprenticeship program, for them to briefly introduce themselves and talk about their apprenticeship program. If they are a developer, for them to talk about what they are doing here in the city of Detroit. And so I'm going to ask if you all can take two minutes, two minutes to introduce yourself and then talk about um, your apprenticeship program, if you have an apprenticeship program. And then we will um, listen to Mr. Clark from the R.B. Robeson Homes. And we'll, we'll give you a little longer than two minutes, but we're going to let everybody do the introduction and then we'll come back to you to talk about your project. So I'm gonna start to, he's pointing this way. So I'm gonna <laughs> start to my lady. right, um, to the, um, they said ladies first, and she always says she's the quiet person, but I'm gonna let you all see just how quiet she is. And again, I'm gonna ask everybody to just um, do your introduction in two minutes. I'm going to say up front that I am going to have to excuse myself early because I have another affair. And once I excuse myself, I am going to ask the gentleman to my right if he will take over the meeting. So, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. A little louder than that. Good afternoon. good afternoon. There we go. My name is Sharon Richards Trevilian, and I'm the owner of. Trevilian Trucking Corporation, also the president and founder of the African American Trucking Association of Aggregate Haulers. Uh, we do the mass excavations for runways, stadiums, roads, airports, 
Um, and they say I'm the only African-American woman in the nation that controls major mass excavations. The trucks that you see on the roads and the bridges, the 1.5 trillion that Donald Trump is putting in, that's what I do. My name is Tony Stewart. I'm the executive director of the Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights. We um, have a apprenticeship program that, um, um, a four year apprenticeship program. We do residential homes. We go all the way to commercial, bridges, concrete, flooring, drywall, metal stuff, you name it. And what we do, we train people to become a skilled tradesman. You know, it's a lot of, lot of money in it. We don't discriminate. We, we take return citizen, have us a higher hat. We uh, have opportunity for anyone that want to get in. Our number is realcarpentry.com. I know I got two minutes, I'm going fast. <laughs> but I want you to know that we here, and any information you need, I'll be here to talk to you. Hello. First of all, I'd like to thank Council President for inviting us here today. Uh, my name is Tim Locker. I'm the manager of land acquisition for Robertson Brothers Homes. We're a home builder that's been around in southeast Michigan for over 70 years. Um, we build about uh, 200 homes a year, mostly in infilled um, areas. Um, we'll go into a little more detail, uh, but we're here today to present a project um, that we're working in conjunction with the uh, Larson Realty Group on the Old Tiger Stadium. Um, so we'll, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we'll go into a little more detail on that project, and we'd be happy to speak with anybody afterward um, on some potential uh, um, opportunities to get involved with that. Hello, my name is Jim Clark. I'm president of Robertson Homes. Uh, Tim and I work together. Um, just to extend some of Tim's comments, we are a traditional uh, single family residential builder and developer. So we seek out uh, properties to purchase, uh, go through the approval process, uh, figure out what type of homes to build on the properties, then we um, do the land development and the improvement. We use the trucking companies to uh, do our mass ex, uh, excavation, and then we uh, build the homes, sell them, and warrant them, uh, and, and turn over the association. So, um, and Tim will talk to you about the project that we have here in the city. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rick Pruce. I'm with uh, IBEW, which stands for the International Brother of Electrical Workers, Local 58. Uh, we have three different apprenticeship programs. If you want more information, go to our website, which is ibewlocal58.org. How many people are here for the first time? First, uh, first time. Thanks. All right, good. Well, welcome, welcome. You're going to get a, a great resource of information here today. How many people are here more than uh, one time? All right, how many people have been here more than a year? More than two years? Man. We got some dedicated soldiers out there. Well, welcome back. <laughs> My name is uh, Jesse Pena. I'm with Layuna Labor's International Union of North America, local 1191. Labor's do a lot of various types of work. We work on roads, we work on underground, bridges, distribution. That means uh, the gas when you turn the stove on, that's distribution work. The gas goes through the pipes. We work on landscaping, we work in asbestos, we work building trades, pipeline. Uh, we do have an apprentice program also that uh, once you become a member, you can take advantage of many classes that are available for you. Uh, if you need more information, uh, we, uh, myself and other two agents that we can uh, answer any questions you guys have, but also we have a, a website if you want to take a look at and maybe submit an application, that would be laborslocal1191.org, and you can apply and check out our website if you wish. But after the meeting, we're, we're going to be here if you have any questions. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Bonds. I'm president of Rufus Local 149. Uh, we have a four-year apprenticeship program, Earn While You Learn. You go to school one night a week for about an hour and a half. Um, if you got any questions, um, you can give me a call, 313-961-6093. Oh, I'm sorry, 313-961-6093. And my name is Adrian Bonds. 
Okay, I will now turn the flow over to the Robeson Brothers Homes. Do you want me to pass these out? Sure. Can I have one, too? Sure. Again, thank you. So uh, Jim's passing out, um, anybody who wants one, uh, just some information on the project. So again, what we're, uh, what we're here today, uh, it's in regard to a project called Tiger Towns at the Corner. So essentially, center field, old Tiger Stadium, there'll be 34 townhomes and they'll be, bu they'll be built by Robertson Homes in conjunction with the Larson Realty Group. Um, Eric Larson's building on the corner project, which some of you may know about, a mixed-use development. Um, we're going to be just north of that as it wraps around Trumbull toward the freeway. Um, what is called, again, Tiger. Tiger Towns at the corner. So everybody should have that. Um, essentially, we're in our final approvals for this project. Um, we hope to start construction, or at least um, start balancing the site, um, land balancing, grading, uh, in the next month or two. Um, so there's opportunities there. Um, there's opportunities um, to get involved with the site development, and uh, we're going. We're going to be bidding out every every part of the project. So every part of the you know building the homes, carpenters, um, you know roofing that that sort of nature. So we've got a lot of cards for you today uh, for our purchasing manager, for our land development manager. If you're interested, we'd be happy to discuss the project with you as well. Um, so again, the project is for 34 townhomes along Trumbull, the west side of Trumbull, basically the outfield um, of the old Tiger Stadium. Uh, if you look on the second page, you can see the elevations of the product. Um, again, it's a townhome, so they're all attached. These are attached single families, what we call them. Um, it is, you know, there are four, five, six in a building, um, but nobody's living above or below anybody. So they're really um, kind of single family homes stuck together, if you will. Um, we will have rooftop deck options um, so you can, you know, somebody can enjoy watching a ball game or, you know, the views of downtown um, on the top of the roof deck. So um, that's the product. You can see the, the first floor, second floor, third floor um, floor plans. Um, we do, these are for sale, they're not rentals. Um, so. Um, essentially, somebody could come in and pick if they want a two-bedroom, a three-bedroom, if they want the, the rooftop deck, if you will. Um, it's about an acre and a half um, worth of land. Again, there's 34 units, and they're about 1,550 square feet total. Um, we're hoping to start again grading in the spring. Um, we would imagine starting our vertical construction, starting the homes themselves sometime in the next, I would say, three months, three to four months. Um, so there's opportunities for that. As I mentioned, we're starting our bidding process right now for the, um, those types of trades. Um, we think it'll take about two years to build out um, for the, the 34 units. Um, I did include the contact information of our purchasing manager and our land development manager. If anybody's interested um, in getting on our, in our bid scope, um, these would be the people to contact, but Jim and I are, are available here to, to speak um, about the project with anybody who may be interested. Do you want to add anything? Uh, just a couple other things. Can you use the mic? Yeah, sure. We've been like We've been taking. <laughs> um, a couple other things. Because they are for sale units, we will build as fast as the uh, market purchases them. So in an apartment community, they'd all go up at once. Uh, you know, we'll we'll uh, be selling out of a model on site or a trailer, depending upon what the city um, lets us do. So you know, we will we will build to suit, uh, and then we have a designer selection center at our office uh, on uh, Telegraph Road and people will be able to pers personalize uh, the home. So I guess with that, uh, you know, we're, we're, for all intents and purposes, a general contractor. We have, su a su we have superintendents. I think we've identified the superintendent we'll use down here. Um, then we, uh, um, we have punch out guys that uh, do a fluff and buff, if you will, getting the house ready for the final homeowner. Uh, but all the other work is subcontracted out, so we, we do not self-perform any of the uh, the trade items, so um, I guess that's that's a good summary. Let me start off by asking you, and so you do have someone, an architect. When will you actually, and if you can tell everybody, when will you actually start um, building, and how are you going about? Who you're going to hire to do the actual construction, and how many people do you plan on hiring um, for this site? Okay, he might answer my question. 
Um, so we, we, we will be bidding in the next couple of months, so we would, you know, we would hope that we can um, get cards from people who would like to be in the bid process. We do this with every project we do. Um, we would, as I say, we'd start with the model. The two-unit two building would be our model complex, and we'd start selling out of that. Uh, we'd hope to get started, started on that started on that is the same time as we're doing land development. Okay, I see someone at the uh, mic, Ms. Hill. Hi, um, I'm glad you all are here, but I just have a question as it relates to, okay, you're the general contractor, got that, and you're gonna be subcontracting those jobs out. Will they be to union shops? Will they what? be to union shops. Like I know most of the people up there, if they aren't a union member now, they've been a union member. And the men up there I know are um, part of uh, uh, the skills trades. They're part of, um, yeah, the Michigan Building Trades. So, uh, so will their members be doing the work at your facility, on your project, on your development? We, we're not currently planning a, a, a strict all union project. We're, we will look at bids from everybody. Uh, and, and hopefully be able to get union representation, if not, uh, you know, um, others. I mean, we have some trades that we use on a consistent basis. We're looking to get new trades okay. and, and get work from people in the city of Detroit. So we, we would welcome anyone, union or non-union, mm -hmm. to, to come bid on the project. Will you be paying, okay, so let's just say you get some non-union people. Will you be paying prevailing wage? Uh, I guess... I don't, I, I don't know what prevailing wage is. We bid it all. We bid every project out, and somebody gives me a lump sum to do the drywall. So th we, don't, we don't pay any individuals. We pay a... A, 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 a contractor. A, we we a pay a contractor who does all our drywall, mm -hmm. all our concrete work, and then he pays his, his individual workers. Okay, and then my last question is, you know, that Detroit has a 51% residency is, well, first I guess I should ask, is this private dollars or public dollars? If public dollars are involved, then of course you would have to uh, do the 51% residency in hiring 51% Detroiters. Are you prepared to possibly do that? It, it's private dollars, and okay. we're, we're here to try and get as much representation as we can on the project. Okay. It, as, as you all know, there aren't enough skilled trades, so we, we, need, we need workers. No, no, I'm just saying, we, are, okay. we, we have... Lots of projects where we need lots of help. I'm just, I'm saying there are jobs out there. We don't have everyone on the sites in our okay. company that we need. So if you've got, if you're interested, we would like to hear from you. We have work to do. Thank I you. This is what I'm saying. We have jobs. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the panel. My name is Terrence McLean. I'm the owner of McLean Investments, McLean Concrete. I like to introduce a new product, excuse me. Um, it's new concrete technology, and I like to present this. Okay, I need you to. I need everybody talking the mic because we are being televised for those that are not here that can watch the. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Um, I have video that um, during the um, later maybe I could show you guys how the system actually works, but it's light, it's cost efficient, and um, I love to do business with you guys. And thank you very much. If there's a question, and I know many said they've never been here before, let me tell everybody we're family here. And let me start off by saying no question is a dumb question other than the question that you don't ask. Because if you're sitting there with a question, I guarantee you somebody else probably had that same question. And they probably saying, this is a dumb question, so I ain't going to ask it. So no question is a dumb question. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you have a question, go to the mic. We are here to try to assist any and everyone that wants assistance. That's why we're here. And we ask you to go to the mic to ask your questions because our media service is here. They are recording this session so that those that are not here can watch it at a later time and get all the information you're getting. So we are all about sharing information. We're all about helping each other. So if you have a question, please go to the mic and ask your question. Uh, 
I have a question. Uh, these units, how much are they going to cost? Uh, sales price or construction cost? Sales price. Um, we have not priced them. Tim's put an about range in there. The, the for sale market for this type of unit in Detroit, based on the uh, comp data, in other words, comparing them to other things or selling in the, believe it or not, two to $300 a square foot range. Madam President, good afternoon. How are you this fine day? Adrian, Mr. Proust, uh, Tony, and, and hello again. And uh, My name is Paul Goldsmith, and as most of you can see, I work at and volunteer at the, uh, the A. Philip Randolph Career Training Education High School in the city of Detroit, which is the focal point for student training in the city of Detroit as well as adult training program that just started. So I've been involved there for two years. I work primarily as a carpenter. I am an architect by profession that have designed many, many buildings, which many of you have probably been in throughout the city of Detroit. If you've been to Henry Ford Hospital, Beaumont Hospital, malls around the city, shopping centers and places. But I'm committed to the city of Detroit through the student activities that we do. I'm on the advisory board for the school. We have our advisory board meeting tomorrow morning, and I'm going to give them an update on the program that we've developed. And in just a few short minutes, I'm going to ask one of our students to come up. He is a graduate of the Randolph Career Training Education High School. He's got the credentials to be a Mason. I'm missing the Masonry reunion here tonight. I was promising maybe he would be here. Well, here, well, we got representation. and. Uh, Nikwan is one of the representations of the fine students that are coming out of the school. This last weekend, we were up in Grand Rapids at the skills training competition in which we had students in plumbing, in carpentry, in masonry. It was just wonderful to see. And we have a resource in the city of Detroit now and for our students. And we advertise to all of the high schools in the city of Detroit so all of the students come over to Randolph as part of a selection so that they can be what they want to be or learn. I'm going to allow Naquan to tell you about his four-year endeavor at Randolph so you can understand better what the sequence is because he alone is a success story and we really want to bring his success to culmination by making sure he's one of those jobs one of those people to fill the jobs from the city of Detroit and stay in the city. They are wonderful students. And Naquan, come on up. How are everybody doing? Um, as y'all know, my name is Naquan Baker. Uh, during eighth grade, I was to, uh, introduced to Randolph High School. They told me they had great opportunities for me. And uh, me being young, not having a plan, I, you know, chose them as a positive route to go to. Um, during ninth grade, they entered me into like a circulation of all the skilled trades. So around that time, I learned a little bit of masonry. I learned a little bit of carpentry, a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of everything, HVAC, everything that the school had to offer. Um, by ninth grade, I entered myself into the masonry program and during that time I learned I eventually got my two-year certificate and now I have uh, I now attend the electrical program so right now I'm just I have my diploma I have my driver's license I have all the credentials needed to you know graduate and get out of high school and then get a great job so Right now, I'm here just to represent my school and the excellent talent that they have brought upon us today. Thank you. That is just one example of many fine young men and women. And this last seven weeks, a number of our students have been taking internships out in the field with some of the major contractors in the city. And one young man that I met during my other program 
is now finishing up with one of the large general contractors and they have committed to hiring him on and bringing him into the carpentry union. So those are just two successes out of many. Let's keep it up and if you have any questions, we'll be here for a bit and would love to tell you some more stories. Thanks. Thank you. And so when he said there's no Mason near here, someone gave him his card. Why don't you get up and introduce yourself at the mic? Hello. Once again, my name is Terrence McLean. I have 28 years experience in masonry work. Concrete, I'm a journeyman. I'm a member of Local 514. I'm OSHA 30 certified. I mean, um, I could share a host of stories, you know what I'm saying? And I would love to get more involved with Randolph. Um, the gentleman, you might have a job. You know, please leave me your contact information before you leave here, because I can use your help. Um, I'm interested in volunteering, teaching, you know, being more involved with my community. I'm interested in working with troubled youth and whoever's that's interested, because we do have a shortage of skilled trade, labor, students in the city, and we just need more programs to work in conjunction with what's going on in the city right now. We got a lot of building. We have over like maybe 10 to 15 years worth of work that's getting right started right now. So you're in a very good position, young man, and myself also. Um, today was a It was a very good day for me because I went to Flint this morning to uh, our training academy with 514, local 514, and that's where I learned this new technology with this brick. And um, it's just, it's, it's a game changer. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, you'll be seeing more of me, McLean Investments. Thank you very much. Hold on for one moment. I, I just, I know um, I'm on the uh, Southeast Michigan Home Builders Association board. I just uh, rotated off, but I know I'm on the foundation board and we've been, um, I know you've put in grants and we've given to the Randolph School as we're building, if there are, you know, if the students want to come and there's some way to participate with our building activity where they can see projects going up, we would certainly support an affiliation with Randolph. We're right there in the city and the transportation should be easier. So, I'll, I'll get. Let me just, let me also say that not only does Randolph have the classes for the, the younger adults during the day, they also have evening classes in the evening for our more senior adults that are interested in getting um, into the Randolph school. So they also have evening classes at the Randolph School as well. So if you're interested, the Randolph School is located on Hubble um, between Six Mile and Ida Drive. And yeah, they have just recently renovated the complete school and it is something to see and something to be a part of. So after he finishes at the mic, you can step up to the mic. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michael Wada. Uh, I'm a second year apprentice for Iron Workers Local 25, but I'm here to pursue another. Uh, I'm here to uh, pursue another trade because welding is really not my thing, and I'm a hard worker. And every I'm hard, I'm a hard worker. I know how I get up. I wear my tools and everything. But uh, I appreciate all the information you give uh, you giving me. And Tony Stewart, you gave me a card about a year and a half ago. I still got it, and I'm. I want to talk to you after this meeting, so. Okay, all right. Congratulations, too. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sami Halhadi. I'm a business service representative uh, with uh, Detroit Employment Solutions. And we are a proud partner for the Randolph uh, Initiative about improving and uh, cover the gap of the skilled trade in the city of Detroit. So just an announcement that uh, this Saturday morning at 10, the whole team of the training providers and from DSC also will be presented at the Randolph School. If you have anyone who's interested in getting to the career, uh, the career of skilled trade, please direct them to attend this orientation at 10 in the morning. 
where the training providers with their credential will be presented along with the, all the facilities will be provided to fully register those candidates and the training has no cost all for free and we are also partnered with other uh, business uh, uh, entities to provide hands-on training after the graduation so it's going to be at 10 in the morning uh, this saturday and at the resource table outside you will be seeing the calendar which is include the training provider name and the credential that associated with every training provider, along with the two announcements about the programs that include uh, Stipe in and uh, financial support for anyone who's interested in the skill trade. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ed, you want to come up and talk about what you do? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Arthur Edge. I work for the city of Detroit, Building Safety, in, Building Safety Environmental Engineering Division. Um, I come here all the time to support this lovely lady here. She's looking out for everyone here. And what I want to let you know that um, at the city of Detroit, people are constantly bringing in plans. Even we have upgraded our system where we're doing e-plans for the contractors to, sum to submit their plans e electronically. There are plans coming in every day. There's a lot of development going on in this city. So you need to get out there and be part of it, get some of these jobs. Also, with the amount of work that's going on, keep an eye out on the city website because we're constantly hiring inspectors with the amount of work that's going on and if you have some kind of knowledge of construction and you got your a GED or high school and you got your driving license you possibly can get a job as a building inspector and the day you walk in you're making sixty three thousand dollars a year so between that or get into one of these trades to get into apprenticeship programs all these ladies and gentlemen up here, they can help you become part of the solution. Get one of these jobs. You can look downtown with the developments going on, the big Hudson project, what this gentleman is doing. As I ride around the city, there's constantly development. Sometimes some of the things that I don't even know about unless I'm surveying the city for a particular day. I was off today. I've seen a lot of projects going on that I personally didn't know about. I'm on the end where you, the dangerous buildings demolition. I get it tore down so you can build something new. So become part of it. And Tony, this man's been hunting you down for a year and a half. I'm a witness. We have, you even talk with his mother. Take care of him. Thank you. I'm easy to find. And it's interesting he called Tony out, but let me just say this to everyone. Sometimes you can come to a skilled trades task force meeting and you come to one meeting and you say, well, I heard, but nobody called me. In the trades, you have to be consistent. You got to call them. Don't sit there and wait for someone to call you. You got to call them. And you know, if you really want something, I'm going to say what the old folk used to say. You be worse. You just keep calling them. And you keep calling them. And you keep calling them. And you keep calling them. Until you get what it is you're trying to get. And eventually, they're going to get tired of you calling them. But they're going to remember you when that apprenticeship program open up. Because you've called them so many times. They're going to remember your name, who you are, and find your phone number. And it might just be the day that you're calling, the right day, where they say, we can help you today. So don't give up. Don't come to one meeting. Don't come to two meetings and say, it didn't happen, so I'm not going back. Because it may not happen the first time. It may not happen the second time. It might happen the third time, or it might happen the fourth time. But don't give up, because I guarantee you, if you're consistent, you're going to end up getting exactly 
what you were here to get. Hello, I'm Stacy Alavashi, and I'm here to represent the HR Department for General City. And I just want to follow up uh, behind Mr. Edge here that the, and I'm so used to saying BC, I had to get the accurate name, Building Safety Engineer Environmental Department. They are hiring, and they're doing consistent hiring. I'm here to step in for my colleague who's preparing for a career fair or a resource fair for the veterans tomorrow. But uh, Ms. Terrence is, uh, consistently has a posting up for positions such as uh, the mechanical inspector and the building inspector. So BC um, has a lot going on. Um, uh, along with BC, the general services department, they do offer, uh, they do also have skilled trade positions for carpenters and electricians and plumbers. And that's something I'm more intimately involved with. So I encourage anyone that's looking for employment, the city is hiring. We employ over 9,000 people. Um, just go to our website, www.detroitmi.gov forward slash employment, complete your application, and as the council president states, if you continue to call, we will eventually pick up the phone and your name will resonate with us. Thank you. Can you give the web website address again? I can. It's www.detroitmi.gov forward slash employment. Stroll down to the bottom, all other jobs, and you'll see it. Or you can call 313-224-9421, and Mr. Newman will be happy to direct you to the appropriate recruiter. Thank you. And she is from our Human Resources Department, and she is in recruitment. So, okay. So I know everybody did a brief, brief introduction. If you can go to, you know what? Miss Wesley, hold on. Miss Wesley, can you help him with the mic? Raise your hand. Do you have the um How are you? I'm here because I have a great admiration for Ms. Jones. I go to the council member meetings periodically and um, I have a question. My name is Ms. Faith. Um, I wonder if um, uh, some of you have thought about going out to the soup kitchens and to the shelters to make workshops uh, or uh, many um, very small job fairs for the people there so that they, they don't have to go to the garbage cans to get bus fare and to get food and clothing and things to, for their jobs and education that they're going to schools for the mothers that are out there that, that need help and also do some of the jobs provide for um, daycare for the mothers that are in the shelters and soup kitchens and for the fathers that take over to, uh, to take over the care for caregiving of the children. Um, also, I was wondering in the places that these apartments, buildings and uh, that are being built, there's a, a, um, a mindset of people that they can't afford them. Is it, is it possible that you have those places that the people can afford them that are going to school that are in shelters and soup, soup kitchens lines and are going to other places for help, that you have a way that they can afford them, that those places that are being built for uh, dwelling places behind the, um, uh, the PAL and the, um, the, the baseball field, the, the Tiger Stadium, the new Tiger Stadium that was built over there and um, a heartfelt uh, thing I have for the homeless people. I'm a former homeless person. And, and I would like to see them come up off of the ground and off of this, the um, manholes to get warm. Perhaps the jobs that are available can help them as well. Maybe someone can go out there and, and introduce them to the jobs and, how, and the training to get the homes and the places for their children and their families. Thank you for, for letting me speak. Thank you. And so let me tell you that I have been over to the
the center on Connors to talk to them, to give them information. I will come back over there to give them some more information. I want to ask Ms. Wesley if she will help you and give you some information as well. But I will be back over there to talk to the people. And then those that are interested in the skilled trades, one of the things that I made sure we did was yes. to put money into the budget that will give people um, bus tickets Good. for transportation okay. if they need bus tickets to get out to the skilled trades apprenticeship program. If they are single and have um, kids and they need someone to do daycare for them, yes. we put money into the budget for daycare for single okay. parents. And so there is so much that we put into the budget to be able to assist people yes. that need assistance. But I'm going to have Ms. Wesley talk to you, okay. Okay. and then I will also come over to the center and talk again. Okay. okay? Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you also, Ms. Jones. My hat's off to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thank very you. proud of the work you're doing. Thank you, and thank you for being here. And thank you for letting me speak also. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, through the chair, um, I'd like to know if um, somebody is here from Detroit Training Center. Guess not. Um, he said he was here. Anyway, um, I forgot to mention that our, we have a training program. I don't know how I forgot that. Um, we train individuals to own their own aggregate hauling trucking firm. Okay? It's the only type of its kind in the nation. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's the only type of its kind in the nation, and we train former prisoners, youth at risk, a plethora of individuals to own. Uh, their own aggregate hauling trucking firm. They can't do any of their jobs without me or someone like me. The excavation has to have trucks, the materials, the millions of tons of materials I bring in and out. So please, please consider this because there is a major shortage in this nation of owners. I mean, I'm getting, I just got back from retirement from Dallas and I'm getting a plethora of requests to do projects, but I don't have anybody of color, woman, or African American that owns the trucks and the materials. Please help me fulfill the vows of my parents to continue to do this in this community. Um, because what good is it me being blessed and nobody else is receiving the blessings? So I want to give them to you, and I am skilled to do it. And my website is ready. Is, I'm going to spell it, T-R-U-V as in Victor, I-L-L-I-O-N, that's TrevilianTrucking.com. And uh, I don't care who you are, welfare mothers, I train the prisoners in the youth for free. I've been doing it 30 years, okay? So, but I got a short list for those people. Thank you. And have a blessed day. T R. Here you go. Well, I, I will repeat it for everybody. It's T R U V as in Victor. I L L I O N. That's Trevilian Trucking dot com. Okay. So please go to the website. No phone calls because they call all over the nation. I train nationally. Thank okay. you. Be blessed. Okay. Question for you. Okay, because I know you can't age discriminate, but is there a cap on how old the person has to be for to drive a truck to work? No, you? they they don't work; they own everybody. Okay, is, so it has to be a it's an owner driver. No, no, I mean okay. they're not. I train you to own, not oh, okay, not to work for somebody. Uh -huh. I don't do working for people. Uh -oh. Everyone that works for me is an independent truck and aggregate hauling firm. Okay, cool. Okay, now I don't care who you are. Okay, and I was waiting for Detroit Training Center. We're trying to develop a aggregate hauling division, which is, they don't have in the nation. Uh -huh. And the aggregates is construction trucking. Okay, and I don't, and they relax their requirements now. So you used to have to have a CDL license for a year. Uh -huh. You don't have to have that no more. Really? So yes, they they're with Detroit Detroit Training Center CDL Class A. 
So, no, I don't care who you are, but now you don't even have an excuse for the money because the mayor now has $100 million for women and minorities in Detroit to improve their businesses. Really? It don't matter what the business is. Okay? And Thank I got you. you. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. I am going to have to leave, but I am going to turn the chair over to... He's going to tell me his name. Mr. Rick Proust from IBEW. I'm going to ask my masoner if he wants to come up here and take this seat so he can join in um, the conversation and give information as well. I'm going to ask if everyone, if you can start off with everyone briefly giving out information about the apprenticeship program and when the apprenticeship program is. He knows the flow of this meeting and he can handle it just well. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm sorry I have to leave, but I do have another engagement that I have to go to. Don't y'all leave. Y'all stay here, because I'm going to watch it. Make sure you didn't leave. And that's right. That's right. Stay here, because they don't leave. They don't run out. And so if you have questions to ask them, they are here to answer the questions that you ask. I want to thank um, my media service people for being here. They are here after we've had a long day on Tuesdays. They come and prepare to take the um, session for us. So Mr. Proust is now the chair. Please follow him because he can be a little mean sometimes and tell you your time is up. So please follow not me all the time. So please follow Mr. Proust and please you all in a timely manner give out information about your apprenticeship program. All right, let's everybody give a round of applause to our council president. Thank you so much, Madam President. So we're gonna start, how about on my left side here with uh, Adrian Bonds with the Roofers and just give us a little bit more information about your program. Um, our, our program is real simple. Um, 18, driver's license. Uh, you have to pass a drug test, and you have to have a reliable transportation. Um, there's no test involved. It's earn while you learn. You go to school one night a week uh, for five months. Um, commercial roofing is, 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 is a, a lucrative uh, trade. Um, I've been in it 28 years. Um, I've made a pretty good living at it. and. Uh, I'm willing to help whoever wants to come out and, and be a hard worker and do the things they need to do to survive. Um, you can always reach me. I'm in my office. You can leave a message. Uh, it's 313-961-6093. <clears throat> the Labor's uh, Apprentice Program is based on four different steps. It, uh, you start at 75%. Like I said, we got different kinds of uh, work that we do. We do road, we do underground bridges, distribution, uh, pipeline, masonry tender, uh, landscaping. So if you get with one of them contractors, you would start at 75% being an apprentice. And then also, it's, it's called OJT, on the job training also. So which is you have to get a thousand hours on the job and a hundred hours of training at the school, then you will jump to the next step which is 80%, and then you keep going. Once you hit 100%, basically you become a journeyman. Um, it's a good program that we have. It just, uh, you know, it is hard sometimes to, for members to be out there in the sun, the elements, the weather, uh, but it is a good program for anybody that wants to take advantage of the laborers, contractors, and, and, and become a, a labor, get a career out of it. It's not just a job. So if you have any questions, uh, after the meeting, we're going to be here, and we'll answer anything that you guys uh, have any questions. All right. Thank you. We're going to skip over Terrence. He's going, we're going to come back to Terrence, but we're going to go over to uh, Tony Stewart. And, Tony, you can give us a little bit more about your apprenticeship programs. Yeah. Um, Tony Stewart here, uh, cop of the Mill Rights Union. Our apprenticeship program, I gave most of the information, but uh, our apprenticeship program is a four-year apprenticeship program, but we... We are we are umbrella of many unions. We floor layers. We residential guys. We mill rights was working in the in the factories doing the mill rights, the conveyors and the arms and all the programming and all kinds of stuff like that. 
then the well, as, as well, we do concrete, we do form work, we do drywall, we do um, finish work, we do doors on hardware, we certified and everything. We're so big that we try to offer a big uh, opportunity for a lot of people in the city and stuff. Then, you know, once you learn how to do these, these this, this circle of trades right here, there's no way you can't make no money. There's no way. I mean, it's a big demand, and we represent you too as well. And we don't discriminate. We got a program called Hamster Hard Hat for the people who go to war and something might happen. They come home early. We have a, a, a program for returned citizens. We don't discriminate against age, period. And local people want to be involved in everything that goes on in the city. So we help developers like the two up here get contractors and stuff that really represent that uh, percentage of um, local guys that want to be on the sites working and stuff like that. So it's a, every Wednesday between 9 and 12, we take applications. And we're just not taking the application. We're actually putting our guys to work because we have a – it's not a shortage, but there's a lot of people who want to get in. They get in, but they don't want to be in. So that's the problem, what we have having right now and stuff. So we keep on recruiting because, you know, it's a, a – a 51% residency and stuff. That means Detroit has got to get as much knowledge as you can and learn about every trade and all this development around here. You got to realize you can't be on it. So um, I, my website is um, realcarpentry.com. That tell you about our whole division, our whole umbrella. All right. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. Kelly, uh, I heard that you have some good news for us. Please come on up to the mic. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you guys for, for having me. Um, my name is Kelly Miller. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator uh, with Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation, um, mm -hmm. also known as Detroit at Work. We have the Detroit at Work Career Centers, three around the city. Um, we are part of the Michigan Works Network. Um, and I just wanted to just let you guys all know about something uh, that is coming up so that way you can be on the lookout for it. Do you guys mind if I turn this around? Because I feel like I'm, <laughs> yeah. Will this move or just take it off? Perfect. Um, so I don't know whether or not you guys are aware, um, but there has recently been legislation to eliminate all driver responsibility fees in the state of Michigan as of October 1st. Yes. And I know, you know, the city of Detroit has really um, lobbied um, a great deal in support of this because we recognize it as being a really huge barrier for a lot of Detroiters, especially as it pertains to employment opportunities and access to them. Um, so, um, what has come out of that is that even though all of the driver responsibility fees um, are looking to be waived as of October 1st, however, if people are looking to have them waived sooner, you can actually do that through our organization. And what we are going to be doing, if you um, have 10 hours of workforce related workshop activity, um, you can actually get those fees waived before October 1st. And so what we are looking to do right now is put together uh, driver responsibility fee forgiveness events that are going to be taking place around the city. Um, and so of those 10 hours, uh, six of those hours can be done online. And um, you can go through the DetroitAtWork.com website. I think the website where you can look to do it is DetroitAtWork.com slash DRF which is driver responsibility fee, okay? And in, in being able to do that, you, they have just modules that are online that you can go through and, and, and complete. And it's about six hours worth of, of modules, or at least it, whatever information that it would cover, it would, it would uh, cover those six hours worth. And then for the workshops and the events that we're gonna be doing around the city, um, those would be, uh, of four hours, so you would be able to complete at the end. You would be able to have all your paperwork complete, all your uh, workforce hours uh, completed. That paperwork would then go to the treasury. You would have those fees waived at that point. Okay, so we uh, are actually going to be working in partnership with 
some of the faith-based organizations. Um, I know right now, because um, I'm, I'm the one that's coordinating this, so um, I know we're, we have some dates that we are setting for the month of June. We're looking to start it sooner than that and have them in May, but we still have to solidify those dates. So I just want to let you guys know that this is what's coming up and that there is an opportunity to already get that process going if uh, driver responsibility fees are an issue. And if they're not an issue for you personally, please share this information. There is all detailed information about the program and, and the legislation outside on the desk. So please make sure that you take the flyers and share it with folks. Thank you. Yes. Please take your questions to the mic so everybody can hear them. We're being broadcast and they can't hear you if you uh, don't get on the mic. So we have <laughs> okay. to have you on the mic. And, and Kelly, if you would, if yes. you could just repeat that for those that are watching on TV with us. If you could mm -hmm. re repeat that website for us, please. So the website is www.detroitatwork dot com slash d r f there is not a direct phone oh yes there is i'm sorry for detroit at work the phone number is 313-962 work which is 9675 so that's 313-962-9675 or visit the website which is www.detroitatwork.com Oh, great distinction. It is AT, so DetroitATWork.com. So it is not the at symbol. So thank you for that distinction. Are there any other questions? Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Skilled Trades Task Force. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, I also wanted to recognize, it looks like we have a few developers out there. Uh, I see Steve Ogden out there hiding in the back. Brother, if you have any uh, messages for us, love to have you come up on the mic and uh, report back all the great things that are happening. I owe you for that, Rick. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Ogden. I work uh, at Bedrock, and we're doing a, a bunch of construction projects, both renovation and new construction. And uh, what I tell the council president and, and her sta staff all the time is put me in front of a room so we can talk about, you know, one of the, one of the uh, things about the Skilled Trades Task Force is you get people in here that are thinking that they're going to miss the train, that all this development has occurred and it's too late. And I'm here to tell you it's not too late because uh, whether the apprenticeship program is one, three, five years, uh, our work alone, just us, I'm only speaking for us and what's in our pipeline, not anything new that we're going to buy tomorrow, but what's in our portfolio today, we've got a decade's worth of work ahead of us. So uh, taking the time to invest in yourself and going through an apprenticeship program that uh, takes two, three, four, five years and mind you getting paid to go through the apprenticeship program uh, is an investment worth looking into and taking serious. So I always want to come out and say it's not too late because that's one of the things I hear all the time. It's too late. You guys have already started building us. By the time I go through this program, all the work will be done. So mind you, that's just us. There's, what's coming is Illages that are building the district. So that's two, three hundred million dollars worth of investment around the arena, housing, retail, commercial. There's a bridge. Uh, there are other developers and developments that you haven't read yet in the paper. Uh, Richard uh, represents quite a few developers. They've got a lot of projects in the hopper. So I, I guess the message is it's not too late. And tell your family, tell your friends to come on out to these things. And some of these guys bring you on to their apprenticeship programs on the spot. Some of them you show up at the yard at the construction site and they'll sign you up. So there's a pathway and I just want to continue to stress that. Thank you so much, sure. Steve. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let my brother here, Terrence, uh, give us a little update on what apprenticeship programs are available through 514. Well, um, it's, um, <clears throat> King, I hope you, yeah, okay. Um, our apprenticeship program is in conjunction with cement masons and plasters. 
Uh, I have a contact number for anyone that's interested, young lady, young men, you're more than welcome. The contact number is 810-820-9866. And you can ask for Brian. Um, he's a really good guy. Um, he'll give you all of the information in regards to concrete or plastering. Um, there's a big difference in um, what a cement mason is and what a plaster is. The principal work of a cement mason is finishing the exposed concrete surfaces <clears throat> on many types of construction projects. These projects range from small jobs, such as finishing of patios, driveways, and sidewalks, to larger projects such as stadium, concrete highways, foundation walls, and concrete runways. Cement masons also work with concrete after it cures with epoxy floors and floor polishing. Plasters, <clears throat> plasters work on a variety of commercial and residential construction projects. They do many types of work, including exterior finish systems, restoration work, <clears throat> ornamental plastering, plaster mold making, mold veneer, hard coat applications, sculpturing, molding work, swimming pool surface application, decorative plaster work, cement mason stucco, and spray on fireproofing. Please give Brian a call. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Terrence. All right. And it, it looks like we are blessed with an instructor from Randolph. We have with us one of the finest instructors that uh, is teaching over at Randolph right now for our electrical program. Felicia Wiseman, will you come up and bless us with a couple of words of wisdom? So for these young people that are interested in getting into the skilled trades, what to do, how to do it, and where to go. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, sorry I was late getting here. Uh, yes, my name is Felicia Wiseman. I'm a journeyman inside wireman out of IBW Local 58 in Detroit. And as he said, I'm a guest instructor over at Randolph, working with the high school kids in the daytime. Um, our kids there, they have a lot of potential. They have a lot of potential, um, you know, working with them on some issues. But, I mean, they're there. They're eager. Uh, just got to let them know that, you know, there are people here that are on your side. And, you know, you straighten your stuff up, we can show you the right path to take. You know, some of them, they haven't had anybody there, you know, giving them that you can do it type of uh, inspiration. So some of them just think they can't do this and they can, especially the females. You know, we tell them you can do this. You know, this is an option for you. This is a great, this is a lucrative career. Go ahead and go for it. And that's if they want to be an electrician or any of the other trades that are there at the school. So um, for any of you guys uh, interested, Come over, check Randolph out, check out the sick kids that are there. I know they have an open house, a career fair coming up there on May 9th. And I know all the trades that are already involved in it, you guys are all going to be there. We're going to try and get our kids, make sure they come back at the evening hours and uh, visit you guys. But just want to say thanks for being there. Felicia, don't we have also a, 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 a night classes there too as well, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, they have uh, the adult program is going on there. They have the evening classes that are there. Actually, tonight they're doing a... A graduation there tonight so those guys are there tonight and they're also there on the weekends yeah i know they have a couple of different agencies that are in there the actress all is in there southwest solutions is in there so um yeah they have the, the, the adult programs i don't have the whole agenda on the adult programs i'm just trying to work with the kids i like the babies so <laughs> try to get them out there and get them some kind of jobs <laughs> all so, right thank all you right. so thank much you. felicia That's right. Some words of encouragement. It looks like if, if anybody has any questions, you can come up to the mic. Um, I also want to recognize uh, Nick Chapital in the back there, if you want to just raise your hand so people can see who you are. If you are interested in getting into the skill trace, specifically the IBEW, and learn a little bit more about what electricians do, uh, Nick is the perfect person to talk to as a resource. Thank you, Nick. Hi, my name is Christina Matthews. I am here with Dominican Literacy Center. And so what we do at Dominican Literacy Center, we help students or adults get their GED or high school diploma. Um, 
We've, we're also a part of Bridge to Apprenticeship program that's working with Southwest Solution. Our phone number is 313-267-1000. What we have learned is that some of um, the adults that's going into these uh, skilled trades don't quite meet the standards. So we've been working with them to bring up their reading and math skills so they can go on to the skills trade. Also, because we are a free program, and the phone number again is 313-267-1000, we're in the Samaritan building. We also need tutors. So I got some flyers that's out in the hallway there. Um, we have a tutor training workshop on uh, May the 19th and it's from eight until four. So you can get certified as a tutor, so we also need, we always get more students than we have tutors. So if you know someone that's willing to teach someone to read or do math, we need you at Dominican Literacy Center, all right? Can you give us the address of that location yes. for our, so our viewing public? The address is 5555 Connors. So we're in the Samaritan building, and that's Detroit, Michigan. 48213. All right, thank you. Thank you. So hi everyone. I'm Linda Wesley and I, I am um, here on behalf of Work Fountain. We met, we had the opportunity of meeting this wonderful group called Work Fountain. And as you all know, we have to say goodbye to the Joe. And we have to say goodbye to the Joe relatively soon. Well, Work Fountain, they are looking to hire a few strong people that have a lot of strength, that have the agility, and have stamina to work to remove the seats. Now, the training starts on May 10th. They're only going to need 5 to 15 people. I'm going to repeat that. They only need about 5 to 15 people. However, I do want to invite you all to please go to the website. There's a lot of great information. There are a whole lot more than just a company to assist in having some seats removed. So if you will kindly go to the website at uh, W, I would say workfountain.com. That's workfountain.com. And please, you can apply online. The, this, uh, this particular job will only last about four to eight weeks. It will last about four to eight weeks. Again, the training begins on May 10th. Again, five to 15 people. You can apply online and you will have an opportunity to even be able to assist in, um, you'll be able to look for other employment as well. This particular company uh, does not go by your resume. So you do not have to have a resume you uh, would simply just go on there and fill out the uh, application. They go by your, the, whether or not they like you, whether or not they like, you like uh, the job that you actually do. And actually, I think I said that incorrectly, forgive me. They go by whether or not if you really like what you do. And they go by your talents, your experience, and your drive. Sometimes we can miss opportunities by just not get putting the energy into that uh, particular job. So again, if you're interested, try the website, go to the website, check it out, and I hope that you get hired. Thank you so very much. Okay, good morning. I mean, good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day for me. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. I'm a pipe fitter by trade, and I'm a licensed plumber also. But my role in this meeting, um, I've been coming to these meetings maybe for the past five, six years, 
and I have gathered a lot of the resources and the information from the various contractors to pass on to citizens who are looking to advance themselves. So I'm going to tell you to take time and write my phone number down, 313-713. 719-9921. And then if there's a contact that you're trying to get in contact with, if it's somebody that you missed out that you weren't able to get in contact, please call me, text me, help. Just text me the word help, and I will get with you within two days, I promise you, and I'll call you and see what your situation is and guide you into the resource that you're trying to get to get into various trades that are available, all right? Now also, <clears throat> there's a few things that we didn't quite mention um, about our const construction trades. They are felon friendly, most of them. 90% of them are felon friendly. If you have a, uh, any type of uh, felon record, they, are, they employ you, you know, so you don't have to be uh, thinking that you can't get employed because you're, uh, you have a felon. And also, we're having a resource fair at my church June the 23rd, write that date down, at Liberty Temple Baptist Church. And it's at 17188 Greenfield between Six Mile and Outer Drive. And that is on a Saturday. It will start at 9 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock to noon, we will have the recruiters, and I'm asking all the recruiters that are at the table now that have employment and opportunities for <clears throat> citizens to get employment to please come call the number that I just gave out, and I'll make sure that you have a table to set up so you can present your program and reach out to the citizens to let them know how they can get in. Also, Judge Deborah Thomas will be there for the felony expungement session. So from one to three o'clock, Judge Thomas will be there for individuals who have a felon and they're looking to get their records expunged. It's, it's free. She will give you the, the resources and will give you the information on how to clear your record. And we also are getting support from Council President Brenda Jones. She will be one of the key uh, individuals that is helping bringing these resources together. And, and also that is in District 2. So Council President, I mean Councilman Roy McAllister will be there also bringing out other resources that the city has for various you know, needs that your community might need. So this is, like I said, is a resource fair. It's a chance for the community to come and address some of the concerns that they might have for getting employment and other needs that they might have need for their neighborhood or their citizens that they live with. <clears throat> and also, on August the 4th, we are teaming up with the Local 58. And I'm going to let Rick give out the address for that. 1358 Abbott Street. Okay, so that is the first Saturday in August. You know, that would be the Rise Detroit Day. And we're teaming up with uh, Local 22, which is my local that I attend. And we're also teaming up with the Region region 1 that we'll be working with, having the same <clears throat> information later on August the 4th. So use that as a source in the contact, use me as a contact to help you, assist you in any, any need that you might possibly have. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Percy. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask uh, Nick if you wanna come up to the mic and give us a little bit more detail on uh, where the location is of 58 and how do you get involved in the apprenticeship programs and anything else you think that we need to know. Okay, good enough. Um, I'm Nick Chapatel. I'm assistant business manager of uh, Local 58, and um, uh, we do have several programs for the apprenticeship, becoming electricians, uh, a residential program, 
which is three years, the sound and communication uh, program, that's your low voltage, which is also three years, and a inside wireman, which is a licensed journeyman. That's a five-year program. Our school is in Warren, located in Warren. That's a 2277 East 11 Mile Road in Warren, Michigan. And we take applications the first three working days of every month. So the next one will be March 6th, 7th, and 8th. May, May, excuse me, uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Now we, we do take op applications online. So you will have to go online, create an account for yourself. Uh, you could do that now, but on those dates you actually apply. And so you'll go on the website, you'll, you'll uh, plug in uh, apply for apprenticeship. It'll ask you which programs, you can apply for all three. And then you will have 30 days to send in your transcripts. Now you can send in your transcripts early. You don't have to wait, uh, wait for your application date, but your high school diploma or your GED. We're looking for uh, the completion, of course, but also one year of high school algebra. Now, I know some people have uh, waited some time trying to get their, their diplomas. You can go on parchment.com and request your transcripts right off that website and have them sent on over. That's uh, P-A-R-C-H-M-E-N-T.com. So, uh, Average electrician right now is right around uh, sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year, um, and business is booming. If you haven't looked around, there's a lot of construction, but we're not just looking for apprentices, and that's with all the trades. We are looking for uh, skills, skilled craftsmen. I mean, because. Uh, there's a lot of things that we represent. We, work, we represent the workers and workers' rights. So we are looking for uh, people out there that want to look for more training you know, and, and better skills. So we do, I, I do have some information out there for you that if you are interested, uh, please give us a, a call. And uh, uh, you can call me if uh, you have skills already as an electrician. My number is uh, real simple, 313-244-5533. So we are looking for craftsmen. There is a lot of work out there, especially in the city of Detroit. And you know, you know, everybody can accept no, they just want a path to yes. And that's what we're here for. Thank you. Can you give that, hmm. can you give us your phone number one more time for those people that have that type of skill level and are interested in joining? Yes, sir. Um, my number is 313-244-5533. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry, I left out a little bit of information. Uh, to the lady who was addressing of needs for uh, employment for individuals who are trying to get training that have kids at the same time while they're trying to get training, well, Focus Hope, Kevin Green is usually here at our task force meeting. He's from Focus Hope, but right now he's in D.C. doing some other things for Focus Hope. So that's why he's not at this meeting. But the contact number for Kevin Green and Focus Hope, which has quite a few programs that are available for citizens to get into various training for manufacturing trades, tool and diamond, in nursing, they have, they have quite a few areas in careers that are available. So the contact number for Kevin Green is 1-313-494-4412, and then also 313-494-5533. And then once again, you can use my number, 313-719-9921. And I'm sorry, I didn't get my name, Percy Johnson. You know, uh, and you can, like I said, text me help, call me, and I'll be sure 
to guide you and where you're trying to go for the need or the help that you might need. And then also, one of the main things that I'm always talking about that's so important because a lot of this funding that we get for these various programs, a lot of, a lot of our protecting the training that we, that we um, get for our apprenticeship programs. One more thing about apprenticeship programs. When you get into an apprenticeship program, they paying for your schooling while you're in training. You know, so when you get your journeyman card, you're getting, you're getting paid while you are going through the apprenticeship program. It's usually, they usually last four to five years. Every year you're getting a raise in pay. Most of the apprentice programs start off from $13, $14, $15, $16 an hour. Every year, every six months or so, or eight months, you, so many hours you work while you're going to school, you get a raise. You know, and by the time you get your journeyman card, you're double that income. You're, you're making $35, $45 an hour. Most of our tradesmen, we're making eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 plus a year. You know, and, and not only that, you're not caught up in a college debt. So use that, you know, as a way to really give yourself a chance to, when you look at all the development that's going on in Detroit, when you see these abandoned homes, you see the roads that need to be worked on, commercial buildings that, that are going to need work done, you're the ones that can be the licensed individuals that will be doing that work. This is the opportunity to come in here and get your license because they got to get somebody with license to do the work. You know, and that could be you. You know, that could be you. All you got to do is come, apply yourself, and be willing to actually take advantage of, of, of getting into these skills and use it, all right, to your advantage. Okay. Oh, I believe, well, one more thing. I'm sorry. So talking about the importance of voting is how we are able to keep these programs and bring these dollars and these resources and the requirements that help our citizens get into these programs. So I have voter registration forms here. If there's anybody here that's not registered, please come see me and I will take time and fill out your, walk you through registering you to vote. Thank you. Thank you so much, Percy. The hardest working man. I tell you what, me and Percy were apprentices together many, many moons ago, so uh, we worked on some housing back in the day uh, right on the waterfront. So uh, that's right, yep. Yeah. That, that's Mr. Wikipedia of opportunities in Detroit. So stay close with Percy. Um, he's introduced me to a lot of uh, good people. Um, I am the president of the National Association of Black Women in Construction, and I came out tonight um, at the invitation of uh, Council President Brenda Jones. Um, represent our organization. We understand that there are some opportunities. I just picked up one of your flyers. Um, is this a mixed-use project where you work with some others because I had gotten some information from another contractor? Um, is yours open for bidding? Are we still in the market? Uh, for different traits. I know I came a little late, so I apologize. Uh, it, it's, a joint, it's a joint venture. It's a joint venture with uh, Robertson Homes and, and Larson Realty, but Robertson Brothers will be uh, bidding out all the uh, trade work. Okay. So there are, there are opportunities, there aren't any contracts that have been uh, assigned at this point in time. Okay. And do, have you given the timeline we can expect those bid packages to come out? Um, in our organization, we have uh, women business owners um, in all sectors, construction management, electricians, plumbers. Um, I do, my company is Nail Right Construction um, and Drywall. We do interior finishing, uh, installation of different projects. So I want to just make sure I'm sending my numbers to the right people. <laughs> cards to the people you'd want to talk to for that. Okay. And then for anyone who is, uh, hey there, Joe, how you doing? Anyone, um, especially ladies, we'd always like to be present to represent that uh, the traits are not just for men, although most of the men in, are men in the room, but women, uh, this is a great, great opportunity and a career path. 
uh, whether you choose to be a degreed and uh, educated construction uh, employee, but you have the civil engineers and construction management, many of those skill sets, or you can start right on the ground doing the actual trades through these apprenticeship programs. We actually are offering a pre-apprenticeship program. We're working on getting our funding now so that there'll be some stipends uh, to encourage the participants for drywall finishing. We are only teaching the art form of finishing. People can hang, you know, people can put the framing up with the carpentry, but a lot of times you kind of get what you get when it comes to the actual finishing. So we're teaching that art form. So if there's someone you know, we are targeting women and girls so they know that this is a viable opportunity. When my uh, sister found herself divorced with two young babies under the age of three, uh, she was able to maintain her lifestyle and rear her family because of the trades as a drywall finisher, something she's done now for 28 years. She's one of our key program facilitators, want to give back. Um, Detroit is booming. We don't want the city to be rebuilt and the Detroiters to be left without the talent and the skill. So the least we can ask for our developers that are coming to our area is to set aside some work for the small business owners like myself who can take this talent that we're developing, bring it to your project sites. We will guarantee you the quality you're looking for. Just like on the end, we ask that they set aside maybe 20% of the housing for a low income. I don't think it's a bad idea if we ask that 20% be set aside for small businesses developing the upcoming talent that we're bringing from all these apprenticeship programs. I don't want to give a lot of people a pro, uh, apprenticeship training and they have nowhere to go afterwards. Um, I met with some people at a program uh, with the Michigan Department of Correction. They have trained carpenters looking for work and that should not be. So I want to make sure that we can work in some kind of partnership, some we should all consider with these small businesses being the liaisons to this new talent and in guaranteeing that all of Detroit is rebuilt, the people and the structures. So I'm Neil Wright Construction, the president and owner, and our tagline is building cities, building lives. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you doing? My name is Vidal X. Um, currently with the Nation of Islam, I have, um, Ran into a lot of uh, adversity coming back home. I served in the Marine Corps for quite some time and came home looking to, after being away and working in the construction field for over 16 years, when I came back home, I ran a business in Ohio. And when I came here, everybody wanted to make me go back into the union to start over to get my contractor's license. And so you got to be unionize, you got to be this, you got to be that. The unions want me to start over as an apprentice because they didn't acknowledge or recognize the fact that I had 16 years of work experience, but because I didn't have the paper document, you know, behind me, they were like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. But yet, I can do more than most of the guys that have got the documentation and trades. Why is it that Michigan has made it so difficult for people? I, I, I'm, too, I'm at an age where going back to the beginning is not something that I'm looking forward to doing when I've done it for over 20 years. Why is that the case here in Michigan? What, uh, what trade, what trade have, are you? Uh... I've done everything from mill work, millwright, to um, H, I'm licensed in HVAC. You're licensed HVAC? Yes, sir. I, took, I went to school, American School of Technology in, in, down in Columbus, Ohio, which is just like the Dorsey Schools or the um, Northwest, Northwest um, Trade School here in Michigan. I went to, to that in Columbus, Ohio. Came here, and they're like, well, we don't recognize that. So it, it's, if, it's, if, it's, who, it's who's really, actually, it's really so discouraging. The, it's really yeah. discouraging when you sit there and you've done the kind of work that you want to do for, for years and then you come to another state or you move somewhere else. I can, I've been to Florida, I've been to Kentucky, I've been to Texas, Alabama, and I've worked freely. I come up here, come back home. This is where I was born and raised, graduated from Northwestern High School, went to Bright Hall Volt Tech Center, got my AutoCAD certification. I mean, done all, this is home. And then I come home, and I can't even get into the career field that I, that I worked in or for the last 20 some odd years. 
and it, it is it, it's, it's frustrating. Well, you came to the right place. You're looking for help, and you've come to the right place. We have a, a great deal of resources that are are here for you. Now, you've you've now, you've named quite a few different trades. Everything from millwright to HVAC. Welding. I mean, welding. So, I mean, what is it that you want to do? Because you've named quite a few of them. To work for self and to train and teach others to work for self. You want to work for yourself? Definitely. So, I mean, if you want to work for yourself, then get your, you, you, are, you set, it sound like you had your license already. You in, can just in, in certain apply areas. for your, your, your contractor's license. Have you tried to apply for your contractor's license yet? Uh, once, and that was about six years ago. and. They, I heard they've changed the ruling, the, 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 the law a little bit, on, but it, they, they relaxed it a little bit based on what I was given before. So now I'm, I got to start over again. Well, I, I, we, we can definitely help you. I mean, we yes. can definitely direct you to the right place. Uh, we just had uh, one of the inspectors from uh, the Building and Safety and Engineering Department uh, on, on trying to get you in the right place. Uh, now, as far as... Uh, if you want to work for somebody, I mean, there's, there's those opportunities, but it sounds like you want to be your own <laughs> boss and you want to have your own contractor uh, license. Yes, sir. Uh, the, right. the pathway to that is, is, is going to the Building and Safety and Engineering Department and actually applying for your contractor's license. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. That's where you want to go. I mean, if you're interested in working for somebody, then, you know, go through the yellow pages and try to contacting all those individuals and, and actually you could work for somebody. There's a lot of work right now. There's not a shortage of of work by no means. Right. Uh, we're, we're here to try to give resources to individuals looking for work. Uh, we have a number of people that are uh, contractors themselves that are up here on, the, on, this, uh, on this dais right now that are in contracting and they can be of help to you on getting into that arena. I think Terrence had a, a couple of comments and, and maybe a couple of questions for you as well. Being a contractor himself, he could probably best uh, direct you in, those dire in that way. Good afternoon, brother. Yes, sir. Um, my question to you is, you have uh, certif certif certificates yes, sir. of all these trades that you completed, right? No. Being a young man growing up, m married with children, in Ohio, they have um, temporary services where you can get into the, the trade fields with, you know, as a laborer, going to labor unit, you know, where I worked as a um, labor temp in a lot of companies initially, even though I'm certified in heating and cooling and refrigeration, I worked before I finished schooling, before I finished school for that, I had to keep working. So I just kept working on different jobs. Then I started working with um, one company. I did mill work, millwright uh, work for two years. Cal can, Honda plants, setting the lines and all that stuff for two years, welding, all that for them never actually getting certified because I just worked for them as a temp, yeah, but then I became, temp. when they realized I knew how to read blueprints and I started doing stuff, they, kind of, they started putting me in charge of different things, but I never got actual certifications. Uh, that's where your issue is. On some things, yes. But even still on the areas in where I am certified, I still got blocked or side, you know, oh, you got to go here you, with the heating and cooling. They tried to maybe go back to the beginning all okay. over again. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Yes. Take my advice. You have these certificates yes. in these trades. Yes. How many certificates do you have in the qualifications that you qualify for? I'm actually universal um, EPA Specifically? No, the, the universal EPA certification uh, for uh, refrigeration, heating, and cooling. In refrigeration, I'm certified in uh, welding. I'm certified in um, computer-aided drafting. Those are my actual certifications as of right now. What I would do is get some, get a uh, LLC. I would start off with an LLC and get some business cards and start networking for yourself. If these corporations and companies don't want to respect you for the talents that you got to offer, then you do like I did. You get you some business cards, you get your LLC together, and you push your own envelope. Here's my card. If you need any kind of encouragement or direction, just feel free to give me a call. I'm in the masonry trade. Yes, sir. You know, so um, here's my I've card. I've done that for years. Too. Here's my card. There's, there's also one more uh, important fact. I mean, we we have business owners up Thank here you. that can help direct you in the right pathway. Uh, I want to recognize uh, 
the trucking industry uh, at the end of our table here that, that yes, could actually give us uh, some resources? I'm just going to cut short to the point for you. Let's make this simple. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Let's make this simple for you. I've been a union person, but Michigan originally was a union opportunity place. That's why you can't get anything because I've been UAW, I'm Teamster, even if our independent firms are not, we have to be signatory with the Teamsters when we do a job in the city of Detroit. So that's your first problem. Michigan, Texas is a right to work state. Some of the ones you indicated are right to work states, but let's just make this simple for you. I train drug dealers, okay? Nobody's asking them they making millions of dollars owning these, okay? Mm -hmm. So you call me, I'm gonna help you get certified mm -hmm. with DBE, MBE, WB, whatever EE you need, and you're gonna make millions. You're not gonna make $20, cause my guys, let me show you this. You see that right there? See that, that truck, everybody look at this truck. That make between 150 and $300,000 in eight months. Mm -hmm. Nobody own one but we're aggregate haulers. So you can skip, like he said, get you a corporation sub chapter, and I'll have you working in a couple of weeks making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. And that's the guarantee. We got an 80 year history. I have built everything in this state, my family, every road you go down, I built Ford Field made history, CompuWare made history, you name it, God has blessed me. You gotta have some money though to buy a truck. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's, there's also two more people that are out in the lobby right there. If you're looking at Tony Stewart right there, he is yeah. with the Millwrights. And also Arthur Edge is out there as well. Arthur Edge is with Building and Safety and Engineering That's Department. He can actually help you as well with uh, the, uh, getting your licensing uh, through uh, BSED. So use the resources. And, and it's, it's your attitude that will determine your altitude. That's Never right. give up. Persistence pays off. Yes. You can't right. let barriers stop you. If, if we let every time somebody says no, stop us, we wouldn't get where we need to be. Totally. So we always got to just push past. When somebody right. says no, there's always some way around to find a pathway to yes. So keep on, keep on, keep on being persistent, brother. Yes. Don't give up. Yes. All right. Thank you. Make it happen. All right. So is there any other questions? There's a, a, a quote from uh, Brenda Jones that uh, is, uh, if it's appropriate at this time that we say that if there's no dumb question except the question that you leave out of here and not asking. So please, right. if there's a question that you haven't gotten answered to, come up on the mic and ask that question. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? My name is uh, Michael Williams, Jr. I'm a graduate from Davis Aerospace Technical High School. Uh, I've been in an internship from uh, LS Brinker Construction, uh, Detroit Spectrum, uh, Spectrum uh, Painters, uh, I remember, I think I heard you say your name is Rick Bruce. I think I, did you say anything about an internship that you had or apprenticeship that you had? I yes. was wondering if I, after the meeting or anything, if I could talk to you and get your information. Absolutely. Um, um, I've been uh, on the field for, well, I've actually, during the internship, I've been around a lot of HVAC systems, electrical systems, uh, safety awareness and everything. I just, I was here because I heard about the information that would be given out and I was looking to receive a job well, looking to get information that I can can further my my uh, uh, my experience, get more experience, get more information from everyone, uh, and that's about it. Thank you. All right, brother. Welcome. Also, uh, like I said, Nick is out in the lobby, and we also have Felicia. Uh, Felicia also wears another hat, and uh, I'm gonna put her on the spot again. She's also our executive board member our international executive board member for our Electrical Workers Minority Caucus and talk about trying to get more women in the trade and more minorities in the trade. Uh, you're looking at somebody that has uh, an international uh, 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 position to, to help advocate for that. And if, if Felicia, if you just want to give us a few words on what that advocacy is on, on your behalf and what you do on, uh, on, on the board level and, at a pr at, and also the president too of the local chapter here. Thank you, Rick. Um, well, just to be able to, like you say, reach out to more females, more the minority, the inner city, 
when I, I mean, I talk to women all the time, and that's the first thing they say is, I can't do that. And I don't know where that, I don't know where that mindset comes from. Um, being in the trade, like I said, I've been in here 20 years, and I mean, it's, it's rough being in a man's world. I'm not going to lie to him about that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I mean, but you, you, you learn to hold your own. I mean, it's like being a parent with multiple kids. You know which arguments to, you know, which arguments to take on and which ones to just let roll by. That's right. As I've been in the trade, that's one of the things I've had to do. I mean, I pick my arguments. Sometimes I don't get into the conversations. I let them yak yak and talk about whatever. But when it gets personal, sometimes I have to step up and open my mouth, you know. So, I mean, these opportunities are here. They're real. But you got to be real. Um, you know, one of the things that my students come into Randolph, it's like, you don't come here every day and then you, wanna, you want me to recommend you for a job. You gotta go to work every day. If you don't come here, I can't say, yeah, he'll come to your job every day. So some of the things that need to be done, the younger people, you need to tighten up some stuff. I'm gonna tell you that, because the jobs are here. They're not gonna pay you to sit up there and all day. No, they're not gonna pay you to have headphones in and not hear that I'm talking to you all day. The world's gonna keep on turning. Put that phone down, put them earbuds down. Work for eight hours, give them eight, and the rest of the day is yours. You got money, you can buy whatever you want, you can buy all your little toys, you know, get your hair done, get your nails done, ladies. You know, get your, get your nails dirty at work and get off and get your nails done. That's right. So these opportunities are here. Don't let them pass you by because you think you cannot do it. So. But on a national level, that, that's it. I'm just trying to, you know, advocate, let them know these, these things are here. And we're not trying to take over anything. We're not trying to rule the world or anything. We just want to be in on the party that's going on. So, thanks. Thank you so much, Felicia. There are so many projects going on. There's so much work going on. There's a project, there's, there's something, you just have to know what it is that you want to do and be persistent and push through it. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody understands that we're here as a resource. Everybody here is volunteering their time. You're looking at people that are not only here, but on the, in, out in the audience as well, that, that come to these meetings to try to provide information and resources to the people, the general public, that these are real opportunities, real careers. And not only just, we're talking about skilled trades and we're talking about becoming journey persons, whether it's electricians or laborers or plumbers or pipe fitters or carpenters, or owning your own business, right. right? We have business owners here as well, and maybe you want to get into uh, trucking. Maybe you want to become your own electrical contractor or, or cement contractor. Right. Those opportunities are all here uh, as well because the people here want to provide you with the information, please. Yeah. Kim Lee Naylor again. I just wanted to say something. We have to remember sometimes that people are not exposed to an industry where to start is just like a foreign language. So even though we have these on a monthly basis in between, it might be necessary that if we start doing maybe just some kind of tutorials, even if it was a YouTube upload or something, or if you wanted to get into electrical. You're hired. I'll do it. <laughs> I believe in helping the next generation because they're going to be taking care of us one day. I want to treat them nicely. <laughs> I don't want to have a bunch of people around me that's not employed and I'm old. But anyway, <laughs> but no, seriously, I was thinking that might be something we need to think about, delve a little deeper to understand what is it from their perspective, what it looks like to get into these trades. We know it. It's like the back of our hands. We could do it in our sleep. But how do we really help them navigate? Maybe we need some more how-to tutorials um, and break it down into segments. Don't just say go to the union. Right. So I call you and what next? Right. You know, I just, we, yes, they are people who need jobs, but sometimes they just don't really know. We might want to think about how we navigate between this 30-day window with some tutorials. Just a suggestion, you can call me. Um, the Association of Black Women in Construction, we're advocates for the next generation and making sure that there's people of color and just that the next generation knows how to do this trade. So we'll definitely be willing to partner on something. Well, thank so you. So give us a call. Thank you so much. And as you see, everybody that has come up here to volunteer, they're not going to run out of here as soon as the meeting's over. They're going to stay for a few minutes to talk to everybody and, and have a little one-on-one -on -one conversation and give you their cards and provide you with their contact information. So uh, feel free to use us as a resource. We're here every month. 
So our next month meeting is going to be May 22nd. So again, the Skill Trade Task Force meeting will be May 22nd, 2018, from 4 to 6 p.m. at Mathis Community Center in Detroit. And the parking is free. The parking is free. So you can please come out uh, and join us uh, next month and every month thereafter. So again, uh, if there's no more questions, and that, I'd, I'd, that's hard to believe, usually uh, we have a, a bunch of questions. Do we have anybody from Butzel to, uh, uh, do we have anybody representing Butzel here that, that could maybe give us uh, some final words? And maybe we'll, we got Linda going out to check to see if we have anybody from uh, Butzel. So we always want to be grateful for the using somebody's space and using somebody's, uh, um, uh, somebody's got to provide this, the seating arrangements uh, and providing uh, the opportunity for us to be here. So we want to make sure we recognize the host community and the host uh, persons that are responsible for us having this, this place. Uh, and uh, we'll see if we have that. If not, um, I know, I know uh, there's another question out there. I know, if not Percy, I know there's got to be something out there. There's something else. We, So the next meeting location is going to be May 22nd, 2018, uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Mathis Community Center, which is on Greenfield, Greenfield and Seven Mile, just north, just north of Seven Mile, right on Greenfield. You know what? I don't have the address. Maybe somebody can Google that real. Some, I'm sure. Somebody, I'm sure somebody can Google that real quick and give us the address for everybody, for our viewing audience. It is 19300 Greenfield. 19300 Greenfield, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. Oh, bottom corner. I guess if I was reading that, the small print, I could have saw that. Thank you, sir. We need somebody with uh, the observant eye there. So it looks like uh, if there's no more further questions, and uh, it doesn't look like we have anybody that's going to be coming to give us the final words on this, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and uh, adjourn this meeting. All right.